Hello everyone, how are you? I hope everybody's doing well this holiday season and today is December 31st, 2016. I hope everyone is having a safe and a blissful holiday season. Um, as the year is winding down, as we are embarking upon a new year, I wanted to uh, have another episode before the year is over and uh, today's video is a slightly different than the ones that I normally put out. Uh, which would be guitar related, you know, so on and so forth. So um, just wanted to spend some time and talk about, you know, wrapping up a year and starting up a new year. Um, and last couple videos I had shot, I talked about th this channel taking a little bit, um, oh, there will be some additional content besides some of the uh, usual videos that I put up. And I think this is, um, you know, good way to start. So, um, you know, my day job, um, I work as a um, IT consultant. I have a my own company where I uh, service businesses, business clients, and you know, often I have to find myself basically practice what I preach. So today's video, I want to just kind of talk about some of the things and routines and stuff that I go through at, at the end of each year and the way to start up a new year. So um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about today is those of you who are in, those of you who have like an office job or in management of some sort, I want to talk about a philosophy called the inbox zero. It's a philosophy that I could go on and on about. It's um, it's very, it, so basically what it is is that you know today's work environment. A lot of people go to work, and, and it, it almost appears as if everyone's there just to push emails. You know, you're you're not really doing your actual work that you're there for. Rather, you're processing emails all day. So, as you know, days go by, weeks go by, months go by, you accumulate and pile up all these emails. So December 31st, I always get into a habit of something called the inbox zero, where I basically declare email bankruptcy. Everything that I don't need, I just get it out of my mailbox and um, start the new year fresh. Um, of course, every, once the new year starts, I'm sure some of the important things that I fall behind on will start accumulating again. But if you get into good routine habit, maybe once a month or so to uh, go back to your inbox zero philosophy and empty out your mailbox for decluttering basically, that would really help your productivity and you know, you, you're not a robot sitting in an office chair just pushing emails all day. So, um, you know, spend December 31st or at the end of the year or whatnot, you know, cleaning out your mailbox is something that I wanted to also talk about. And then secondly, um, as the new year begins, uh, one of the things that I normally do is decluttering. So by decluttering, what I mean is there's decluttering of the digital goods and decluttering of the physical goods. So let's talk about decluttering of digital stuff first. You would go through basically your iPhone, your smartphone, what have you, back up, empty out all the photos and movies that you have shot over the year, freeing up you know, giving the phone a fresh start, your computer, things that you have not backed up, back up your data, get it to a fresh slate. So, you know, I'll give you another example. On Facebook, I would go through, you know, each day and I will stumble upon something that I want to read later. So what I will do is I will save that link so I can come back to it. So, you know, set up a routine once a month, once a week, what have you, and then you would review those links that you have saved and stuff that's not uh, worthwhile reading, you purge, you know, what have you. So basically getting it again, even something like that to a 
clean slate is what I mean by decluttering of your physical, I mean, uh, digital goods. And then as far as the physical goods concerned, um, if you use something, this will tie into my um, next topic, but if you use something like a uh, day planner, then uh, that's a physical good that you would archive away for future reference need if you have and what else you know your your garage your office your home office things that you've been just accumulating and hoarding throughout the year it's a good time on um a good time now at, at at the end of each year to clean that stuff out so again your new year has a fresh start um <clears throat> so that's uh, what i meant by decluttering and you know Next, uh, next topic would be the New Year's resolution. So, of course, every New Year comes, you know, everybody spends time coming up with New Year's resolution. I've, I've been reading some stuff about how that's actually counterproductive um, and it's not very intuitive. And, you know, how many of us have, you know, fallen victim to coming up with something on January 1st only to find failing on following through two, three weeks later, maybe two, three months later. So what I would say today is focus on quality of your resolutions than number of resolution items that you jot down. So rather than coming up with 20 New Year's resolutions that you may not follow through on, come up with the two that you will live and die by, that you will stick to, that, um, that will guide the way of you you being of who you are through the rest of the year so focus focusing on quality than quantity is something that i wanted to stress and when you set a new year's resolution and it's a something that i always stress that your goals need to be quantifiable by by that what i mean is your resolution just can't be, okay, in year 2017, I am going to lose weight. Okay, well, that's a great goal, but you need to attach qual you know, something that is qual you know, quantifiable. So you could say, in 2017, I will lose 15 pounds. So that you have a solid target that you're going after, something that you can quantify as you keep going along and tracking your progress. Um, I'll go to gym in 2017. No, uh, maybe you could say I'll go two times per week. That way you have something that you can count, something that you can, you know, quantify, something that you could be accounted for, accountable for. Um, me personally, a lot of you know I'm an avid cyclist. I've uh, written 5,400 miles this uh, year. Uh, and I've climbed about 360,000 feet throughout the whole year. That is actually s smaller output than what I had the year previously, 2015. So for 2017, my goal is that I would like to ride 6,000 miles and I would like to climb 450,000 feet throughout the year. So that is something that I have solid numbers attached to for my, uh, one of my New Year's re resolution. And I hope to see that I could um, complete what I've uh, set out to do. But again, when you set a goal, you need to have you need to have quantifiable uh, measure attached to, so that you can keep a track of things. And then you have to also figure out a way that works for you, so that you can review your progress periodically, whether that's once a month, whether that's every quarter, so that you don't lose sight of things. What you don't want to do is have a great, you know, workout weight loss, you know, effort during the month of January only to slack off and not be able to follow through come April. So you need to keep yourself honest. Uh, you know, there's no way to really, there's no one method that's going to work for everybody. So find something that works for you, whether that's some physical good or digital good that you can keep track you can keep reviewing your goals and resolution which ties next nicely to my uh, next piece so um 
at the end of the end of the year and the beginning of their uh, of the of each year is also great time to um, get yourself give yourself a fresh start on time management um, tools basically and I really hate calling time management because um, you know one hour that I spend may mean different meanings than this person spending one hour or this person spending one hour because we all have different standards. So I normally uh, kind of call it a resource management. Uh, some people call it task management, you know, whatever. So whether that's like an iPad or, you know, tablet, digital form, you know, laptop or like a analog way of doing things such as Moleskin, um, Moleskin, uh, term like a, a lot of people use Moleskin and uh, Leuchtturm notebooks for doing like a bullet journals and those are great. Um, not, again, not one thing is uh, better than the other. So you have to find something that works for you. Maybe you already have something that has been working well for you. Um, another one that I really like is from, um, is it Self? Self Best or Best Self? It's a great, um, um, they, day tracker um so you set up you set up you you start each day with the specific goals you start each week with specific goals and helps you guide your way there and for 2017 me personally i'm gonna test out something called uh it's a planner from japan called hobonichi um there's a lot of um Infuse the people out um, out there that's that really swear by Hobonichi system. If you check like Instagram or YouTube, so this is something that I'll be testing out in the 2017. Uh, what's been working? What's been working well? What I've been sticking to is um, my Franklin Covey daily um, planner. That's been working well, but I'm gonna let this one down this uh, this year and see how things go with my new planner system. So again, it's something you, you uh, one thing is not going to be the best fit for, you know, everyone. You have to find something that works well for you and stick to it and figure out a way to make your um, day productive, right? Everybody has 24 hours in a day. It comes down to who is able to eke out and extract a more productive time out of the same amount of time given so um you know i want to sp specify I, I i want to spend time with you today you know going you know talking about why it's important to effectively manage your resource which i equate to time and um next topic is you know something that could help you that uh, again this is uh and this is the last item uh for today's video Find something that's, you know, something you can use as inspiration. Um, I personally use, I, you know, I do look at online quotes and sometimes when you buy these things, they have like a um, famous verbiage by, you know, historical figures that are motivational and, you know, guy like Tony Robbins, if you um, follow him on like Facebook and Twitter, he gives you good um you know, one-liners and whatnot that will, that could keep you motivated and inspired. I personally uh, ha love having uh, posters that um, throughout the office, my home office. I even got something for my kids this year. So um, if you're if you have a company of your own and you have your own gig, then maybe something like uh, posters from a company called Start Up Vitamins. Those are really great. I'll have a link down below for everything that I've talked about today. Um, just so that every time you walk by something, something is staring right at you so you don't lose focus. So you keep track and you stay focused. Something that reminds you what you're, um, what you're about and uh, helps you stay on course where you need to be. So uh, something like that is, again, good to acquire end of an year beginning of a new year so that uh, you could set course of, of a new year and make it a very fruitful year right 
So um, those are some of the things that I want to talk about today as we are wrapping up 2016, going on 2017. I guess uh, right now in some countries it may already be the New Year and in that case, Happy New Year to you and uh, best wishes. Until next time, you guys all take care.